Welcome everyone back to the new year, uh, 2023. Uh, it's the first code review sync of the year. So um, there's a couple of read onlys for um, planning things that are upcoming. Uh, tag most people in those issues as well, but take a look. Um, and then Annabelle, you've got sort of the first one uh, that you want to chat about for the new year. Yeah, um, I just got a ping yesterday on this issue to uh oh optional merge request notifications for approvers so i haven't really gotten a chance to read it's really long it's also three years old um so i don't have thoughts on it other than a bunch of questions which i see you already answered um it looks like jihu is going to be contributing this so we need to make sure that we're okay with the design and the implementation plan and all of the potential drawbacks and then um, just from like a surface level reading, I was wondering, wait, you probably already answered this. Um, no, you didn't. Okay. Can we add to the custom mm -hmm. notifications option? Um, so it would exist, uh, you know, as an optional <laughs> notification. So that seems like where I, my, my first thought was where that is where it could live, but I wanted to know if you had any immediate thoughts on that idea too. Um, yeah, we can talk about that. I, I left you sort of like notes on all the other things and risks and you can, we can go back and forth on those if you want to chat again. Um, I, as far as where we add it, I think that depends on how we approach it. Um, the way I think it's proposed in the issue, um, and I don't necessarily have strong feelings one way or the other, other than that, like it's not a default on behavior, but the way it's proposed in the issue is that it's a project setting, not a user setting. And so the project would then opt users in to, to getting this notification, right? Like if the project thinks that all approvers want to be notified, then the project could turn that on. Um, we could go the other way and make it a user setting but then I guess you'd have to have like a user setting and then in that giant notifications settings area for users, you'd have to like be able to select which projects you want it on for and don't want it on for, right? Like if you didn't want it for everything, but you wanted it for some. So I don't know. I don't know which is the better. Yeah, I don't know which is a better way to approach that. Neither of those sounds ideal. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think those are, so yeah, depending on what you think there, I guess that would change how you would approach it. Right. That makes sense. Um, Okay, and I don't know that somewhere I saw if you know if we enabled it for GitLab, we'd have we'd be notifying more than one hundred and fifty people on every single merge request. Um, would you say that our usage of approvers and code owners is a good example of it being used correctly? That's a tough question. I, one of the things I had been thinking about, like. If you step away from code owners, um, I don't think we have good data on this. I'd have to go look. I remember at some point, most people who used approvals that weren't using code owners used the default approval rule, which is like the any eligible user and that's set to one. And so they're an approver, right? And so therefore you're at whatever membership to project is, is any eligible user and therefore they would get to him. Like if that was on for the GitLab project still, and then the setting was existed, you'd actually notify like a thousand or fifteen hundred people every time an MR was open. It'd be way worse than like our scaled down code owners version, um, which is still pretty bad. And so I think I think that's fairly typical that people use the any eligible user rule. Whether or not those are the people that want to turn this feature on, I don't know. There's a lot of people who say, like, well, we use really small, like narrow scoping code owners. So maybe it's it's not going to be as big of a deal. I put a note um, 
I don't know, E4, uh, which is like similar. Someone's proposing like changing GitLab's internal review things, but um, you know, there's feedback in there. Like at small, at a small enough scale, like in a team of five to ten or something, right? Like or whatever the arbitrary number is, it probably doesn't hurt to tell all ten people that like, hey, there's an MR that needs to be approved. Because it probably more organically works that way. But I think as a company hits like a certain scale, right? Like that no longer is like a valuable, um, a valuable notification. In the issue, a lot of the comments were from internal, what is that team called? Like sales or account managers. They were mm -hmm. saying like, you know, so-and-so with 400 seats wants this feature. Um, is right. there, do we know more about those companies or those um, users, can we learn more about them? And then on the flip side, I guess what you're saying is, you know, do we want to spam 1500 people with a notification that they're an eligible approver every single time? Uh, it probably, well, actually, let's go back to the first thing. Do we know more about the users that are asking for this? I haven't, uh, no, I haven't looked into what companies those are. Um, that's actually, harder now but uh it's possible we could do some of that um the the other is like the issue where we stopped doing this also has like a bunch of customer links in it where like customers didn't want this behavior anymore too <laughs> uh so it's not like it was um like both were done in like vacuums sort of right like they're the other the other one was like an intentional decision uh, you asked about it being a regression and it was a regression in the way we added people to merge requests or a, a change in behavior. I wouldn't call it a regression. It was a change in behavior. Yeah, um, 49 which, thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, 49 thumbs up on a six-year-old issue that was done in like 12.9. I think 12.9 predates me, but uh, similar. Yeah, so we okay. could do the same, like we could look into the customers if you think that would help, if you think it would help to talk to some of them. I think um, I think by making it optional, right? Like we reduce the, the blast radius. And so like it may be less important and we just let people sort of opt into this behavior. I think it's a question of how we let people opt into the behavior um, that probably is what, what needs to be figured out. And when you say how they opt in, do you mean whether it's a user preference or project preference or group? Yeah. Yeah. Or group preference or whatever the case is, right? Like how do we, how do we let people decide that they want this notification or that the organizations want this notification? Yeah, that seems, that seems logical. The, the, the possibility of sending way too many emails is not necessarily our problem. And I don't mean that in a, like a mean way, but it is a possibility you're going to need to fine tune the rest of your project settings, membership settings to get the result that you want. And I'm assuming the people that do want this are working that way anyway. And the poll based approach, this would be super useful for that. Yeah, there's another issue. Uh, I added it in the related section too. That's um, some of this sort of exists. So if you like edit approval rules, on an open MR, we do actually send you an email that says you've been added as an approver. Like that notification exists, but only if you edit the approval rules, which is a very weird um, trigger there. So like some of that already exists. And then the other one is um, related, not related is that um, I guess we send you a to-do in certain situations as well if you've been added as an approver. Uh, um, but not an email, just a to-do. Uh, and so that is also related, unrelated. Like we probably need like all of these things to like get into one <laughs> setting place, which may be why this is more work than like that one issue is. And so it would be good. Um, it'd be good to take a look at um, but I will say the one for the set you as an approver like to do is both the original and the the duplicated one where people complaining that it's spammy, not that it's helpful, but that it's annoying. <laughs> Great.
great. And then I just added one more at the bottom. I've seen this brought up a few times and I don't think there was, you know, a conclusion yet, which is fine. But when should the notification be sent? When the MR is first opened? What if it's in draft status? And then what if uh, additional approver rules are added after the fact? So I guess on open, unless it's draft, sounds reasonable or we could add a setting to always open merge requests in draft mode and then when you turn it to ready then it sends the notification i figured it all out we're good yeah okay yeah i don't um i don't know either i think that's what's confusing about the notification right is it because it's not clear like what the value and like do you want to know that an mr exists or do you want to know that an mr is ready for review and I think that's sort of like the difference of when you would send that notification. Um, if you send it when it goes into draft, then you as a person who could approve now know it's something you could approve. And if you want to keep an eye on it, you could. If you send it when we mark as ready, are we telling you you need to go? Re like, what it, like, what is the purpose of it at that point? Um, the other risk is that if you're using code owners, in theory, this notification could fire off every time you push because you might have added a new file that touches a new code owner trigger, right? Like, so like, yeah, I don't, I don't have good answers for like, how do you deal with this on an ongoing basis? Because there's, there's a possibility that the approver set grows as the life of the MR grows. Um, and so do you send it once? Do you send it to someone if they show up in a second rule? Do you send it if they show up in a, like, it, this feels like a, it gets messy quickly. Um, so I think those would be things to think about. I don't know. <laughs> and then this probably belongs actually in a different section, but if we did this and it was set up, so code owners were notified in some logical way, um, how would you imagine assignees and reviewers working with this? Would would the people who are reviewing it just assign themselves or would you just ignore those sections? I don't know, because to me, this doesn't fit with like how we've talked about review flow, right? When we talk about review flow, we talk about being really intentional. And so this is like, Sort yeah. of the opposite of very intentional. Um, and I, you asked about it like in relation to um, review rounds earlier, and I sort of it's similar. Like I don't, I don't know because I think, I think that they're different workflows almost. Okay. Well, speaking of those workflows, as you were talking, and ideas start popping into my mind because we have so many different different workflows and so many different use cases and so many different customers with settings and teams and everything. Now I wanted to check, has anybody ever discussed the possibility of having a code reviewer dashboard where that would be your homepage when you're doing code review? Like you're going to start code reviewing, you're going to go to this dashboard and it just summarizes pretty much your work pipeline. And because we, if we are talking about having a, a way to summarize the work that you could do as a code reviewer there's a lot of new ones we just saw in this call like there's a lot of stuff that goes into each one of those things that like re review rounds or review requests they're not the same as being set as an approval approver um so it's kind of like there's different levels to the importance of these things but they're still if i'm done with my pipeline I might go into this, take a peek at stuff that is waiting for review, and the waiting for review depends on teams, um, conventions, and settings. So all of this starts to be very complicated. And earlier above, I was musing about adding stuff into the MR dropdown, which is a no-go from the start. But it just starts to become this thing where we're talk we've talked about merge request boards in the past, uh, being able to visualize the evolution of the merge request with the review rounds, that is going to come into play again. Has, ever, has that ever been discussed or come up? Like a dash, dashboard, like a homepage for code reviewers? 
that anybody remembers? I I've heard the word. Oh, Anna. go ahead. Okay, um, I was gonna say I've heard the word dashboard been thrown around a lot. Um, I don't know if it's been merge request specific, but more like a dashboard for every user to see what they need to work on in a given day. So it would kind of house their issues, merge requests, to do's. I don't know how it would work, um, but that's, I don't think I've seen a merge request dashboard. Okay, Thomas, you wanna say something? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if you can hear me okay. My audio setup's all crazy, but yeah, I, I, there's a, I know that uh, the foundations team is like, would like to work on dashboards since that's something that's like, kind of for every for every uh person across the whole company you kind of want some place to to start rather than having to rather than having to to know where you go um so a code reviewer could have a dashboard and, but I, I don't know that there's any been any real progress on that it's just sort of a, a dream i think okay thanks okay. yeah i was gonna say i've heard similar to annabelle and i think it's something the plan team has looked at, but like right now we sort of, we call, um, we call the merge request page a dashboard, actually. Like if you click on it and say the ones that are assigned to me and in theory, you could filter that to like capture all of the different views that you wanted, but you can't have like four of them up at the same time. Really. You could set like that list to be um, ones where you are an approver or could be an approver or whatever, right? Like you can do all of those things. I think the, the next step in sort of what you're talking about is like, can I, create a view that has five of those and they're saved like queries. And then I like see all of that at once in some sort of better layout. And I think, yeah, that's the, um, that's a piece that I don't think anyone is taking on, but I know um, is talked about. There is a working group for dashboards and foundations, but I'm not sure if they mean those kinds of dashboards uh, or if they mean metric style dashboards. I think they intend to mean metric style dashboards, but we're, there's some conflict over the word dashboard in the product uh, in general. So, yeah, probably the wrong uh, terms, but uh, yeah, I'll move it over and see if there's anything that we can, and I'll search around. If you have any issues, I'll link it up so I can jump in. Then. Thanks. Is there anything else that we need to do for this issue? Like, do you know if there's timing? Is this going to just start being implemented and we're going to have to catch up or are they going to wait? Um, they would like to pick it up in 15.9. They run their development cycles the same time as we do. Um, so that would be starting in two weeks. Um, but I think if you, I, th I think there's two options. One, we can sort of, work on it in real time as they put like an MR forward, as long as we've got some base foundational things that we think we want done. Uh, the alternative is, is like, if you want to go back and say like, here's all of the things that we have, there's too much in scope to like reliably achieve this within this time frame, And we don't have the capacity to like do that. That's also sort of like an acceptable answer to go back. And they might push in like, want to find an MVC and that's fine. Like if there is something small that we could, do then like maybe we work to that but um yeah i think it's really on us to to decide whether or not we have the capacity to help support them or whether or not we like the proposal enough anyways my preference would be to just have them start working on it and kind of collaborate in merge requests um but i am going to be out for pretty much that whole milestone uh, in february so maybe i don't know Okay. I'll have to figure that out. Yeah, I would say take a look. Um, take a look at the proposal that's in there without sort of like all of the other complications that we have. And if that's a place to start, then like that's a place to start. And then we can patch the rest out in MRs. If there's something that's like a glaring concern, then I think that's where it would make sense to say we need to to stop on this and not not move forward. Okay. So it is sort of time sensitive to to get uh, something posted in there this an week, opinion, hopefully. An opinion form, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. I can do that.
thanks uh, for bringing that up, Annabelle. It's, uh, it's a complicated one. So, yeah, makes sense. Uh, that's all that we have on this side of the agenda. So I'm going to hit stop and then see where we go.